Hey everybody, we have to start with a question from my partner Shep. Are you demanding a trade? LA Galaxy, Greg. I want to live in Malibu Beach. Oh, well, it depends what they're going to offer in return. I'm not letting you go for nothing. Next on Extra Time. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Greg Lawless. As always, Shep Messing sitting next to me. And this week, we're going to start with some controversy. Wilmon Conde of the Chicago Fire demanding a trade to New York. We also have a little bit of Pan Pacific Championship fever. And the San Jose earthquakes start to rumble again. But we're going to start with the biggest controversy, really, of the offseason that's come up. Wilmon Conde, right when they get into preseason, he demands a trade from Chicago to New York because he wants to follow his coach, Juan Carlos Osorio. Greg, I love it. I actually love it because he came out with a very articulate statement. This is not, you know, Andy Pettit and Roger Clemens in front of Congress about steroids. This is a guy that was brought to this country from Colombia to play for Juan Carlos Osario. So very articulate in the statement, very honest, very straightforward. Definitely. Let me read actually from the statement. He actually says, the Chicago Fire is a great institution, but my interests and desires are no longer with the team. It is my desire to pursue my career with the New York Red Bulls starting this season. Do you, do you see a trade happening here? Yeah, I think absolutely. And normally if a player would say, I think it's credibility for Major League Soccer that a big player is saying, trade me, but he's picking the team. Normally that would handcuff John Guppy in Chicago. But ironically, the New York Red Bull team, they have exactly what they need in terms of players if they're going to do a trade. Well, they have to replace Chris Armas. That's the biggest hole. You're looking maybe in the defense. They need something to be in the holding midfielder. So you look at New York, you've got Dima Kovalenko, who has ties to Chicago already. Seth Stamler, maybe another player in there. Anybody else that comes to mind? Well, they'll need another defender. So I think four players, Stamler you mentioned, Dima Kovalenko, and I think Jeff Park, Carlos Mendez, some kind of combination, I think that deal's going to happen. Well, this sort of throws Chicago in, in a little bit of upheaval. Now, there's, we got a question this week actually from Sam in Section 8 who's wondering about who's going to be in the attack for Chicago. Obviously, you have Blanco in there to serve the ball into people, but... Lots of forwards, none of them have really established themselves yet. Chad Barrett, Chris Rolfe, you have the rookie now. Patrick Nyarko is in there. Who's going to play up top? Well, I think we saw it a little bit, Greg, last year with Chicago. Blanco was charismatic as a, as a catalyst in the midfield, but at times he got frustrated with the guys up front. For me, Chris Rolfe. He's got to be. You yeah, have to have Chris Rolfe. He's got to stay healthy. And yeah, I, that's I think true. the kid has a world of talent. If he stays healthy, the real question is, who does he play with up top? They got Andy Heron. That's true. I think he's a good player as well. Well, he might be that exactly that type of you know target forward that they've lacked since Nate Jaquel left, and Paulo uh, Paulo Wanchope just really didn't do it last year. So Chicago having lots of questions already in the preseason. Can you know Dennis Hamlet in his first year? Can he really get it going? While Chicago's dealing with the Conde controversy, the Houston Dynamo and Los Angeles Galaxy have traveled out to Hawaii. Probably, presumably not drinking Mai Tais, but they are there for the Pan Pacific Championship. It's a good tournament, team in from Japan, Sydney FC in from Australia. Most people would be looking at Los Angeles, obviously, with Beckham and, and all of that, but let's take a look at Houston Dynamo. They're the two-time defending champion, and they have some questions going into this offseason. Greg, I think it's a great little tournament, a little bit of money there, great location, branding Major League Soccer, and the two teams you just mentioned, you're right about Houston. They've lost Cochran, but I would argue they had the best back four in the league last year. Question marks up front. I mean, they certainly have Brian Ching, but who else is going to play with him? Well, that's the real question for Houston, I think, right now. They lost Joseph Nguyenia and Nate Jake. Well, both of them went to Austria. I'm not really sure why they did that, but, you know, they wanted to play in Europe, I guess. Maybe a little bit more money. But, you know, Houston now has to replace that. I spoke with Dominic Kinnear last week, and he was talking about how you know, they're looking for some players. Every league is look, every team in the league is looking for a striker. They're looking maybe for a South American. They're down in Argentina doing some scouting to find someone. He wonders whether Chris Wondolowski can actually pick it up and become that player. But, you know, he feels confident that his midfielders with Mullen and Brad Davis and Dwayne DeRosario can still be the catalyst for that team. Greg, I don't think there's any question about it. I'd make the argument that, you know, Houston, first of all, they, they could be the first team ever to win three in a row. They've always been below everybody's radar screen. That's true. It kind of snuck up on everybody, but right. they've won the last two cups. So Dominic Kinnear is clever. He's astute. He's got a great global scouting network, he'll come up with the missing pieces. And he always seems to make a trade sometime in the season. You know, he picked up Nate Chaco, he picked up Joseph Nguyen. And these are two tr trades that actually led, I think, eventually to the MLS Cup last year. So eventually, I think Houston's going to be fine. And they're going to be dangerous by the end of the season. You watch. 
Last week, there was a rumor that Benny Felhaber, the unsettled Darby County midfielder and U.S. international, was going to be loaned out to the Houston Dynamo. Now, Dominic Kinnear told me that that's not the case, but there is still the rumor flying around that he might be going to the San Jose Earthquakes. Now, what a great player that Earthquakes could use him a lot, but Frank Gallup is starting to build his team. It's an expansion side. They have a lot of work to do. He made one big signing already. Ramiro Corrales has come in. Yeah, Greg, obviously Frankie Gallup didn't watch USA friendly against Mexico to sign Corrales. Well, probably not. Corrales had a nightmare against Mexico. However, this is a veteran player. He's been in San Jose before. He won a championship there. Three years in Norway. Did well over there. This is a guy who I think can really help them. Whether he plays in the midfield or in the defense, he's a free kick specialist. Got a wicked left foot. And he's going to help them a lot. There's no question. He got that Mexico game out of the system. Right. That's a good acquisition, but it's not enough. Frankie Yallop and John Doyle did a great job in the expansion draft, but those are really role players. Right. I still think they need some key players in the midfield and up top. Certainly. In the back, they look good. They've got Nick Garcia in there, Ryan Cochran from Houston, uh, Joe Cannon in back in the goals. So they've got some good players back there for the defense, and now you're bringing Corrales. But... They do need some help up top. They're looking at uh, Federico Arias, an Argentine striker. Um, but, you know, it's going to be a typical expansion year, isn't it, for them? I mean, it's going to be tough for them. Well, it is. But if they need another striker, Carlos Ruiz in L.A. is about 80 pounds overweight. So they <laughs> grab that. Well, that, you know, that 80 pounds of Carlos Ruiz is probably worth about five goals, you know? Talking about expansion, though, I mean, there's no way they're going to be as pathetic as Toronto was last year. Oh, Toronto. You, you had to bring it up, didn't you? Poor Toronto. We, this week, we actually got an email from Gerard in Toronto who asked us, besides hiring a new coach, what has TFC done to get better in the offseason? Well, Gerard, um, search us. We really don't know ourselves. <laughs> Toronto hasn't really done much. They did hire a new coach, John Carver, former assistant at Newcastle and with Leeds, but... Uh, that's really the only move they've made. Yeah, it's inexplicable, Greg, because you'd argue it's the best franchise in the league in terms of fan support, certainly one of them. Mo Johnson is a savvy guy. I mean, he, it was, he's got a preconceived notion of what he wants to do. That's why he moved himself up, brought in John Carver. But for me, it's still about the players on the field. They must have gone through 100 goalkeepers last right. year, <laughs> and they're still missing players that can get the job done. Right. And there's also a question about John Carver. comes over here from England. Now, what does he know about the American players? What does he know about the system in, in Canada and North America, about how players are, you know, MLS itself is confusing enough for, for a, an American coach, let alone a guy who has no experience really over here. That's a great point, and we saw it early in the history of Major League Soccer, big-name coaches with no experience right. with this setup. Major League Soccer, the American or Canadian player, they failed miserably. Now the role model for success has been the Dominic Kinnears, the guys who have been here. And no played league. in the league. Yeah. Absolutely. So this one, a little strange, the hiring. Well, Mo played in the league, but I, my take is that maybe Mo is actually in the right position now that he's in the front office. I'm not sure Mo is a coach, to be perfectly honest, but I do think that, you know, he's not bad at maybe scouting, finding a good player, finding a good young player. He found Maurice Edu last year. I thought that was a good one. He made some mistakes in the players he brought in from outside, but, you know, I think what Toronto needs to do now is to go and find a really big, big name DP. Listen, I, I agree with you totally. I'm rooting for them to do well, but let me tell you something. For Toronto, the honeymoon's over. You get a pass the first That's year. True. That's true. That's a sophisticated crowd up in Toronto. They're going to need to win on the field. Yeah. Well, Gerard, that's your answer. We're still not sure ourselves what they've done. If anybody else has any questions or comments or criticisms, email us at extratime at mlsnet.com. Well, I've got my Pan Pacific Championship <laughs> fever. My hula skirt is back in, in the closet. I'm ready for the finals this weekend. We'll be talking about all of that next week. So join us and we'll take it around.